Welcome to the video demonstration of Adroit Photo Forensics. Adroit Photo Forensics is designed to be a program to be used primarily for doing investigations involving photographs, digital photographs. Key features include smart carving, smart filtering, uh, guided carving, and we have an interface designed to organize, categorize, group, sort, and display hundreds of thousands of photos. So why don't we get right down to it. So right now you're viewing the new case screen. Um, since this demo is going to run for just 10 minutes, I'm going to bypass most of the options here. I'm going to just select a disk image uh, and we support both NCASE as well as raw DD images as well as direct drive access. Um, as you can see, I've, I've selected an image. Uh, there are lots of, of options which I'll cover in another video. But the only key thing to know is here is that I've turned on smart filtering, which is our content analysis um, algorithms um, for, to, to do smart filtering recovery. And I've set the explicit image detection under the smart filter to fast so it doesn't impact the time taken. So now I'm going to click on Analyze. Now it's recovering. A uh, thing to note in terms of the smart filtering, I set it to explicit fast because explicit best takes a little and balance take a little bit more time. And you can always run explicit the, uh, the smart filters again after the case has uh, finished recovering, after the photos have uh, been recovered for the case. Now once, the, once you have uh, an explicit fast, you fast running, you will have a good idea whether there are explicit images in your case and then you can always run a more intense um, smart filter, a more thorough smart filter on it after the case is complete. Right now we finished the active processing, so, so we recovered 80 files from the file system and it's now recovering the deleted files from the file system. You'll notice that the, it's doing smart carving currently. Smart carving is a proprietary algorithm that recovers fragmented photos. This is something that nobody else can do. Uh, one other feature that I'd like to talk about uh, while it's recovering is our blurring of thumbnails. So if, since, since our product is used a lot for explicit images, you can blur the thumbnails on demand by, going to, by pressing Alt-U or by going to the Tools menu and clicking on Blur Thumbnails. So I'm now going to unblur the thumbnails so that you can see them in normal mode. Now you can also pause the recovery at any stage by clicking here and you can stop it midway through if you so wish as well, though you cannot resume after stopping. The left side you have a disk visualization and we're just about to complete our recovery for this specific demo and the recovery is complete. And we have three partial photos here, as you can see, under the, partial, under, under the partial category. So this is the photo gallery. And the photo gallery is used really to organize and group photos by their photo content or their EXIF data. Um, the photo gallery itself is a, is a topic for a separate video discussion that you can take a look at. But for now, I'm just going to quickly show you that you can group it, for example, by EXIF, let's say, day, and then you'll suddenly see that the photos have been recategorized. You can group it by camera. You can group it by start cluster, etc. So let me switch back to the default grouping, which is the file name. And I'm going to click on the smart carved photo. So now we, there are five photos in this case that were smart carved. So you can choose to view these photos. I'm going to click on view so I see these photos. And now we are in the photo forensics viewer. So over here, you, what you see is uh, the primary image being displayed. Of course, your standard things like zooming in and out is there. And there are lots of other details that, uh, forensic details that are printed out in this, uh, in, in the photo viewer, including cluster information and sector information. And you can zoom through and you can click on each one here. One of the unique things that we do is we provide you with a full range of block and cluster counts. Um, so you don't get the starting cluster, but you get everything. So you'll know exactly how the file was laid out on the disk. Now here, now I'm going to go back 
and I am now going to talk about the smart filter screen. So the smart filter screen is used to organize data by uh, uh, the photos by their content. The most important being the explicit or the skin or the skin detection uh, smart filter. And over here, because we ran fast, the there's a, there was the accuracy isn't as good, but it, at least you, if there is explicit content, there, it's likelihood that you will see it. As I mentioned earlier in a separate video, we'll talk about uh, how to switch it so that you can do an explicit best, uh, which has higher accuracy. But even if you just do explicit fast, you have a slider which you can then slide to increase or decrease the number of uh, photos that are potentially detected as explicit. So for example, I'm going to increase a little bit more and I'm now down to this. So these two photos were detected with the most skin and you can clearly see over here why that is the case. So now I'm going to go back. There's only, I would like to briefly talk about one other smart filter which is a thumbnail mismatch smart filter. And this smart filter is, is um, useful because, I'm going to click on view here, is because um, Pornog child pornographic content has quite often been hidden behind safe thumbnails. So here, if you notice, the thumbnails are actually safe. They represent a different image, whereas the actual image is completely different. And so our thumbnail mismatch filter detects that, and so you can then browse through those to see if, if any of those potentially have illicit images in them. Uh, another big feature of ours is uh, our... Uh, timeline. So I'm going to do a timeline of, let's say, all the photos. I'm going to click Show here. And you can see, uh, by clicking on it, I'm seeing the photos uh, between Sunday, April 20th to Saturday, June 21st right now. And these are all the photos there. However, I can click on the date filter and I can say, show me the photos. So right now we're viewing by exhibit date time. Uh, we c Show me the photos by, for example, file modification date, in which case we see this. But let's go back to exhibit date time and you can then zoom in so and you can see that uh, and sort of break up the time so you can now see that on November 21st there's this one photo here on um, January 20th it's like June 20th to June 21st 2008 you have 14 photos and another thing you can do is you can click on view photo and you get transported to the photo viewer so you can study the photo details more in depth and then you can go back at any stage. So I'm going to close. I go back. And so that's the photo viewer. There's a lot that you can filter down by dates. You can choose your date, etc. A couple of other things that I would like to mention. You, you can export and import hashes. Uh, for, for the hash alert, you can export hashes into FTK. We have a batch analyze screen where you can select multiple disk images. So here, for example, I've I select multiple disk images and you can set options individually or you can run them with the default options that you've already set and you can start a batch file and start running them overnight and come back in the morning and then hopefully they're all done and you can and you can open those cases individually. So this is a huge time saver 